It's a shame. If they will own up to themselves, they will know that they brought this calamity on Oga. Because they could never tell him the truth. They, when we sit down amongst ourselves, we say, ah, you know, the moment you tell Oga the truth, to, ah, on the attorney, and they will, ah, they will block you. Ah, we can't do that. Oh. You, you can't do that to a man that you love. Tinubu knows if I was working for him, I would be one of the people going around looking for money for him, for his campaign. But rather, a parasite will sit down and be looking for how to take money from the leader. He knows I will go all over the world to get money for him as long as I am convinced that we have kept those records straight. There is nothing wrong with not going to university. There is nothing wrong if you choose not to. But what the law of the land says is that you need minimum up to. I'm not even sure the law says you must pass school side, but it said up to school side level. So I assume that means you must have a school living certificate. That's all. And look at something that we would have kept within. We have now internationalized it. This humiliation and disgrace now is international. This is something that if we had limited ourselves to Nigeria, it would never have gone beyond Nigeria and they could have maneuvered with good PR guys around. They would have polished it. They would have explained it. The man would have come out to apologize. I am sorry as a young man. I made mistakes. There is nobody who has ever made a mistake in his life. I made a mistake, but... Now, I've, I've atoned for it, I've done this, and I promise that moving forward, I will be a positive role model for other Nigerians. I will, there is a way you pack, even people will be crying watching you on television. But for as long as they continue this gra gra, as long as they continue to dig deeper and deeper, this problem will not go away. If people think, oh, there is nothing, the Supreme Court cannot do anything. He's president. Nobody can remove him. No president has ever been removed in Nigeria. That is what they call statistics. And that is, there is always a first time. There is a second time. So maybe this will be the first time. So we we'll leave it to the justices of the Supreme Court to determine. I mean, there is no way you can defend it. And all our social critics who used to attack other people, who used to demonstrate on the streets, suddenly, pim, everybody is silent. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. <clears throat> ah, at the end of this one, I don't think a lot of people will be able to talk about anything again. But well, it's not fair on us to criticize every other government, and because our friend is in government, then we cannot talk about him. It's not fair. They should go in. Look, today, if I am in Tinubu's shoes, people will say it's because you are not in his shoes. Well, lie. I will resign. As honorably as possible. Someone told me today, say, ah, there is nothing honorable in resigning at this stage. I said, no, there is nothing Nigerians will not forgive. People will applaud you, people will beg you. As bad, as bad as uh, Donald Trump was with lack of decorum, there are people who are still dying for him today. There are people who want him today. So it's, it's how, how you market yourself. But they will never tell you the truth. Today, if you say, well, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was going to come to this, and I've decided that I don't want to plunge my country into any form of chaos. I don't want, you know, uh, this kind of infamy, you know, against my country. And as a patriotic citizen of Nigeria, I resign humbly, and I wish whoever takes over from me the best of luck. That would be it. It's a simple thing. But no, they will tell him, you can't do it. Too. Those people, Tinubu has only to benefit from that presidency. He's suffering. Everybody who knows how difficult it is to run a country, we know that it is serious pain. And it's not getting any younger. So, it's serious pain. It's those who are enjoying power on his behalf who will be goading him on and telling him that you cannot resign. So, what do you do? 
Everybody who is making money does not want the person. The, so you are the you are the victim, but you won't know it. They will tell you, "Hey, Babake, you are the." There is no human being like you. So anyway, shall be well. If you have other questions, please. Oh yeah, oh, of course, Mr. Johnny Wednesday, the psycho fans. Ah. <laughs> They will tell you not to really happen. I'm a senior advocate of Nigeria. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. It's unfortunate. Now, they are resorting to forging articles and putting words into... I mean, yesterday, something that was written by Selitor Shehu Sonny, they put my name on top of it. Alibaba sent it to me, me in the middle of the night but this morning that did i write this they had a debt hundred thousand naira alibaba said bobby would never write this and bobby does not write like this and bobby does not think like this it's good for people to know your principle he won the bet hundred thousand because he knows me he knows that look if i'm working for tinubu no jupiter can come and drag me to go and work for Atiku. if i'm working for Atiku. There is nobody on this planet who can drag me to go and work for Tinubu. But that's, that's me. I can't. It's a, person, it's a matter of personal principle. We all need money. It's easier for me to go and work for a Tinubu if it's for money. But at my age, 63 plus, what do I need? I just had my Amala and Okra and fish. That's all. How much is it? I won't sleep in more than one one room. Even that one room is one corner of the bed. Your wife is in the in the middle somewhere. If she's around. That's all. What what more can you do? Eh? What more? What more do you need? My mom, I was born poor in Ilefe in 1960. My father died when I was only 13 years old. My mother was a stark illiterate. I like to describe her because I'm very proud of her. And, but she knew the value of education. My mom was intelligent. My mom was brilliant. It's just that in those days, in the family, they sent only the male children to school. And so my mom was deprived of going to school. There is nothing to be ashamed of. I'm so proud of her. From the age of 13, my mom single-handedly brought me up, sent me through schools. I did school staff three times. I want to use my life as that shining example of the possibilities of God. I wanted to be a teacher, marry a teacher and live happily thereafter. I never knew in my life I would be where I am today. So, there is nothing happening that has not happened to other people before. I got to Lagos at the age of 28. I didn't have where to stay in Lagos. In 1988, nowhere, nowhere, nowhere to stay. I started with my friend in Bajibuyi and uh, his wife, Fumi. We first lived in somewhere around the Butemeta. From the uh, Butemeta, we moved to Edimpejo, around Obaniko, where everybody knows Lagos very well. We, we know what I'm talking about. From there, I moved to Cheikh Madibeso and his wife, you know, a Fumi Mama. So from uh, Cheikh and Funke Adibeso's home in Antony Village. Shegun was working for Chariga Ganifa Emir at the time. This was where I got radicalized and became very close to Ganifa Emir. And I, I realized the importance of principle. So I moved from there. Simeo, a squatter, I was squatted, no, nowhere to live. So, and these, my friends, were the ones taking care of me. Then I moved to my friend, Biodu Obishakin's house. He passed on just about in the last two months. They may so rest in peace. He was living behind today the Basco Motors in uh, Antony Village and around the, the Onigongo, you know, which is very, very incredible wife. Falake, Falake, God will be with you and the children. I will continue to treasure and value what you did for me because without all these friends, I don't know what I would have become in life. So there is nothing wrong with it. If you have 
a life of poverty for as long as God wakes everything up in your life. I consider myself a child of destiny, a child of diversity. That's why I can never hate anybody. When people say, oh, you must hate him. How can I hate a man who has not offended me? The only difference is that I cannot work, I cannot serve two masters at once. Maybe some people know how to do it. I cannot serve two masters. Atiku Abubaka is the man I signed for. My party is PDP. And why was my party PDP? Because I saw the recklessness of the APC under Buhari. I saw the incredible, incredible hardship that our people faced. I saw the terrorism. I saw the kidnappings. I saw all manner of debilitating problems and challenges that Nigerians faced. And I said, Umba, 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 APC does not deserve to come back to power. So I joined PDP. I joined PDP. At that time, Peter B was still in PDP. We both bought forms to contest on the platform of PDP. He left. And then people say, oh, I should follow Peter B. I remember in those days, we all used to fight. Then they said, uh, no structure. I was talking about my personal experience in the Labour Party. That Labour did not have what it took to deliver on the presidency. That I leave to history. So, people say, oh, I should move. I said, no, I'm not a robot. How can I join PDP and suddenly move again out of PDP? That's not me. Peter Obi and I remain friends. We remain brothers. You all saw him at my birthday on May 16 in London, just, you know, recently. And you can see the camaraderie between us. So people... I mean, anybody who knows me knows that. it's nothing personal. And I'm repeating it here. I have nothing personal against Bitinubu, but I cannot work for him because I'm already working for Atiku. So, yesterday, some nonsensical people wrote, Dili Momodu throws in the tower. To who? For who? Asiwaju knows me very well that if there is one person who will dump his party to come and join him, it's not Dili Momodu. It is not the normal. Those who know me know I play my role in politics. It has not, they say, oh, it's because they didn't make you this. Anybody who wants to be anything will first of all go and join that party. I've been in opposition. My adult years, I've been in opposition. This is my first mainstream party. Even when Abiola was contesting, I was supporting him as my adopted father. It had nothing to do with SDP or anything. I had friends everywhere. My, one of my closest friends, Unduka Baigbena, was in NRC. I was working for SDP. The, the car he bought for me was what I was using to campaign for MK Wabiola. That's the way we roll. It's nothing personal. And people are saying I must. Thank you, Ro, NS. Thank you. Look at the book I'm reading right now. This is a book by Baba Kode. This is someone I will call a godfather to Tinubu. Okay? My best friend, Prince Arita Muladiremi, and myself, I knew all our contributions to their party when they started in Osho State. I never went there to ask for anything. I was only supporting my friend, Damola. So people who don't know our history, let me see if I can find it. He was talking about his experience as the governor of Osho State and the events leading to that time. While Dele Momodu, a renowned journalist, this Baba Kondi's writing now, was aiding the Mola Adiremi to pressurize me for the deputy governorship slot, I must confess 
in the secret of my mind, I was always impressed by Dele Momodu's decorum and preferred to nominate Damola Jeremy, his friend. I personally admired Prince Damola Jeremy. He was a brilliant law teacher and a grandson of Obadesoji Adelebi, the late owner of Fife. The mother was also married to one of Obafemi Awulowo's granddaughters. Unfortunately, the mother was not used to Ife politics and could not secure any support from the then leadership of AD in Ife division. So, you can see, we were just selfless people doing our thing. And when they didn't give my friend the deputy governorship slot, we didn't mind. We still continued to support Baba. I have tremendous, tremendous. I was shocked to see my name. I'm even shocked <laughs> that he remembers after about 24 years, he still remembers the role that we played. He wrote copiously about his interactions with Amala Adelemi, with Iyola Michure, with Ni Yehula Day, you know, and uh, the rest of us. So, as I was saying, anybody who knows me, so you can imagine this fat book by Baba, our iconic Baba, who is, in fact, is probably the most loyal, the most reliable, the most dependable person to assure the world I met in the group. He knows me, he knows my position. I met him on, on a flight one day to Ghana, you know, and uh, we spoke at length, and I, I told him in my mind. But anybody who knows me knows that, yes, I love people, but like Chief M.Q. Abela used to tell us, he said, the, the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself, not more than yourself. So I cannot love Tinubu more than myself or more than my country. Especially my country. I can't even afford to love him more than myself. I don't mind. I've done many things for him that he is not even aware of. And one day he will, he will be aware of it. You know, the love that I have, natural love that I have for him. But when it comes to nation building, we must all rise above the pettiness of ethnicity, religion, and pecuniary gains. That is, that is, uh, that is my position. 